Hey there guys and well, welcome to FP1 and welcome to Is His Career Over the series where we sit and talk about a certain driver on the grid that hasn't necessarily done enough, we think, to stay in the sport for 2021 or hasn't got a contract with for 2021. For this episode of the series, we're sat talking about Kevin Magnussen. I'm delighted to be joined by Tinas from the TF1 show on this one as well. Uh, Tinas, obviously, the last time last time we were on a podcast together, last time we were in the, uh, in, in the podcast booth, it was... Uh, and this might be an extreme example, right? But, well, let's uh, go to your house. I want to murder you. Like, with the <laughs> okay. intent of murdering you, right? It was, it was interesting, um, <laughs> for sure. There was a, that you, you, you threatened to kill me at one point. Um, I mean, we, aim, we always aim for interesting, right? Oh, 100%. 100%. You know, you've got you've to you've got spice it up. So, um, yeah, like I, said, I was telling you before we, we come on, when I wanted to start this series, you were one of the first names that I, I wanted to get on the show because, yeah, this is going to be a right laugh. So, let's before we actually jump into Kevin Banks, and just tell us a little bit about what you do over the TF1 show because I think it's something that a lot of people will be interested in. All righty. Well, so the TF1 show is very similar to a Formula Podcast 1, maybe with less you know, editing noose, you know, Will, and maybe with less speed. Like, I feel Will is like the king of churning out a, a reaction video or a, or a, or a quick, you know, <laughs> he, he's the king of the, of the, how can I call it? What, 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 how, what can I call it? The instantaneous video reaction. So maybe not like that, but yeah, so I'm a podcast uh, on both on YouTube and like on your typical podcast sites like Apple and Spotify and CastBox and quite a few others. Yeah, once a week, typically have an episode where I talk about either the race or I guess just general topics in F1. And I mean, well, you've also been a guest on in the past. So yeah, that's that's a long story short. So please, if you can go check it out. Hopefully you're not too disappointed. Hopefully you find my dry humor and my soothing voice something to listen to more often. <laughs> nah, it's a voice I could listen to all day, mate, all day. So let's let's jump straight into things. Kevin Magnuson. Now, you know, he's been a driver that's kind of Kind of slept, 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 what, slept, what am I trying to say? He kind of snuck under the radar, I think, this season. And part of that is because he's just not done anything special whatsoever. Three retirements in the first five races. Now, you could argue the collision with Albon wasn't all 100% his fault. I still think that it was partly his fault, although the stewards disagree with A lot of people disagree with me. Um, knowing your, uh, your feelings for Alex Albon, I imagine I know where you stand on the situation. But <laughs> where would you take... Where, where would you take... Or how would you take K Mag season so far? If you could sum it up in in a few words for us, I think not great to be honest. I think the only reason we haven't noticed um, Kevin Magnussen is because his teammate has just been doing even worse than he has. To be <laughs> honest, like it's like a comparative thing; it's a relative thing. <laughs> so I mean, Grosjean is doing quite poorly, and I think Magnussen as well. So. I have to say though, in Magnuson's defense, his drive in Hungary was quite impressive. I thought, you know, obviously they, they took a bit of a tire gamble and that worked out for them, but like Magnuson hung on much better than what Grosjean did. So that's why mm. I think other than Hungary, it's been it's been pretty miserable, I'm not gonna lie. Ugh, yeah, what what do you think? Yeah, I I, I I agree with you. You know, I think Hass, I've said it on podcasts before, but we do love Haas strategies. I think they do like to spice things up. They've kind of accepted the fact that their car this year is not going to get into the points on merit, especially with how competitive that midfield battle is. So they will go for these audacious strategies. Like when they pitted Grosjean, uh, or I think no, sorry, they left Grosjean out, sorry, uh, at the Silverstone race, and they ended up pulling some interesting moves there. But yeah, we're not talking about Grosjean. We'll keep, keep, keep focusing on Magnussen. But yeah, like, like I said, again, pitting uh, both cars... Um, before the start of the race, even on the formation lap in Hungary, and that get, gave them that so far at least their only point of the season. Now, if that changes in the Spanish Grand Prix, we'll see. I mean, both pass cars, in fairness, seemed all right on Friday, but then fell off the pace again on on Saturday. And we're recording this not long after qualifying, so maybe we'll be proven wrong. And we've got we've got Grosjean on the podium. You never know. I doubt it. But yeah, I. Well, if we look at the prospects for the rest of the season, yeah, I'd say you off already. Grosjean on the podium, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> this is going well. Um, but, you know, if we look at K Mag's prospects for the rest of the season, then what's he going to do to improve? Because at the moment, especially with the Ferrari juniors doing very, very well in F2 at the moment, they're, Ferrari are going to be looking for somewhere to promote their drivers up. People like Callum Eilert or Robert Schwartzman or Mick Schumacher. 
And there's only two seats at Alfa Romeo, only one that Ferrari really have control of. So Haas is another destination for those drivers. And, you know, I, I can't see them keeping both Grosjean and Magnussen next year anyway. So what's K-Mag got to do now to really keep his seat into 2021? So I think K-Mag has to essentially outperform his car consistently because I think we can all know or we can all admit that the Haas is a bit of a dog, right? I think, you know, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Williams for worst car of the season and Alfa Romeo, I guess. But mm. the thing is, somebody like George Russell is in qualifying especially outperforming that William and you know getting that car into Q2 when, when the opportunity presents itself but you know somebody like Kevin has just sort of kept it at that baseline I feel and I think that's going to be the key for Kevin um, because I think Roman you know Grosjean is one foot out of the door like I don't really think Grosjean is going to stay after this year Kevin there's a chance if has feels that like you know if they promote maybe a ferrari junior next year they need a bit more of an experienced hand um alongside the ferrari junior but then in the same breath why would you not just get nico hulkenberg in to, to perform that role i mean hulkenberg has shown over the last two weeks that he can basically just step back into an f1 car and perform well and magnuson is just not consistent enough you need somebody like hulkenberg with really really good consistency and i mean magnuson is like this literally he has three or four good races a year and where he really does well and then the rest it's just sort of you know he's complaining and sulking and being making himself a nuisance you know in the breaking zone more often than not and that's why uh, yeah so kevin i guess to summarize needs firstly to really up his pace he needs to outperform grosjean comprehensively and sort of do something similar to what Russell is doing in, at Williams. Secondly, he needs to be really consistent about it. He can't be the bully he always has been on race day. Like he needs to take do a cost-benefit analysis, and that's the actuary in me speaking, a cost-benefit analysis, and he needs to come to the conclusion that sometimes it's better to not put up a fight, right, for the greater good. And I feel, you know, Associating Kevin Magnuson with the greater good isn't something we do all that often. And I think if Kevin can make us associate himself with the greater good, then I think it's going to go better for him. Yeah, I think maybe perhaps the better question we should be asking rather than is K-Mag going to stay is how many doors is he going to smash on his way out? And, you know, it's it's a trick on you mentioned Nico Hulkenberg there and Hulkenberg, you know, he's one of the best drivers out there without a seat. You know, he's kind of the Esteban Ocon or the Pascal Verlein. Now, obviously, Ocon's had a way back in. I feel like Hulk's going to be on the grid next year. And Haas, is, Haas or Alpha, for me, are the two big teams I can see him moving into. So, you know, and you mentioned those silly instances as well. We saw today, uh, free practice three, Ocon and Magnussen. What happened there, basically? Because that was... It was weird, right? <laughs> I don't know. I can't I can't describe it. I was, I was sort of thinking... Are we watching Formula One or Formula Four at the moment? Like, what are these guys doing? But it's so typical, right? Because I feel both Magnuson and Ocon, they just, like, attract incidents like these. It, I, you know, when you look at, like, weird things that happen on track and strange things, it's almost always somebody like Magnuson. I mean, Grosjean is, our, is also in there. And, and somebody like Ocon. Where Ocon doesn't really... Like, he doesn't go looking for trouble. It just always seems to happen to him. <laughs> and... Yeah, it was just bizarre. Like, I have to say, I agree that it's sort of neither here nor there. Like, Magnussen was probably just trying to get out of the way and Ocon was focusing on the Williams behind and not on the car in front. And then Ocon looked up, you know, after looking in his mirror, then all of a sudden he just saw the Haas. And then I have to say, his avoiding action was quite spectacular. Literally deciding that... You know, on the balance of it, driving into the wall is a better outcome than driving into the back of Kevin Magnussen. So, um, an interesting one. I don't really, I, I, like, it was so ridiculous. I actually don't have, like, an, a serious or a, you know, like, a, a valuable opinion for you. <laughs> I mean, remember that that car used to be Nico Hulkenberg's and, you know, K-Mag told Hulkenberg to suck his balls at that point. I think, you know, Ocon got a bit too close to sucking Magnussen's balls at that point and said, you know what, I'll take a wall instead. But no, but it shows you that, you know, again, Ocon did what you call a cost-benefit analysis and he decided to rather have an accident 
than suck Kevin Magnuson's balls. Now, I don't know whether that, whether, whether Kevin Magnuson needs to think about it like that, but I'd, I, you know, like, yeah, that just should tell you everything you need to know about Kevin Magnuson's perception, or I guess, I guess the perception of, of Kevin Magnuson in, in, in the driver, in the driver market. Yeah, for sure. I mean, came out, he got lucky there. I was surprised there was no further action taken on that one. I would have thought he would have got either, if not a blocking penalty, a causing a collision penalty for that, but he didn't, he got away with it, which is fair play and something that doesn't usually happen with Kevin Magnuson. But also like, where would have Magnuson have gone if they've given him, if they gave him a penalty, right? <laughs> pit lane maybe maybe in the next maybe back to silverstone something like that like cars that slow i mean but would that have made a difference <laughs> would that have made a probably difference? not the net outcome will be the same no points for magnuson so i i uh, obviously and this is a discussion for another day <laughs> but you can't apply penalties like that so i'm just being facetious but yeah to me i guess whether you got a penalty or not slightly indifferent from the principal's perspective i can you know i can i can get why you'd want him to get a penalty but also Ocon was snapping too. yeah so that's i think why they said you know it's no driver wholly what's what's what do they always say you know one not one driver wholly at fault or you know predominantly mm. at fault yeah i think you're right so to me on to kind of the last segment today then or, or the penultimate segment perhaps if K Mag doesn't get his has his has seat. Let's say Haas announced their driver line tomorrow and K Mag is not in there. Where else on the current grid could he end up? Is there anywhere or is he done, basically? No, I don't think I think if if, if it's done if he if he's if he leaves Haas. Mm. Because if you look at the other teams and, and the other drivers sort of rotating in the market looking for drives, why why would you get Kevin Magnuson? I don't think Kevin Magnuson has shown enough over the last three years it has he's had the stability so it's not like he had to like learn a new team and sort of find his feet again he's had the stability and he really hasn't shown like there were glimpses as i said he has like two or three really good races in the season he's qualifying in, in austria last year was really good hungry this year was good you know so he has had his moments but he's not consistently up there and i think well do you have in the uk like no name brand. Yeah, yeah, like you know, like your Sainsbury's casual, you know, your, your food or your Tesco, your, yes. your Tesco original. Magnuson, yeah, yeah. Magnuson is a no name brand Formula One <laughs> driver. If you get what I'm saying. Okay. Yeah. Like he does the job, right? If he, you know, he does the job. He does he does what it says on the tin. Mm -hmm. He drives a car quickly around the circuit. But given the choice and given the money, would you buy no? Would you buy no name brand? Will no. If you have Nico Hulkenberg, that's a, a, a sterling, sparkling original. Definitely not. You know, that's a very good point. I love that analogy. That is brilliant. Uh, I, <laughs> that is brilliant. So, okay, to finish things off then today, simple question. Kevin Magnussen, is his career over? Yes or no? Yes, because I want to see some Ferrari juniors in that seat next okay. year. Okay, I'm, I'm going to play devil's advocate. And I'm going to say... Although I, I agree with you, and I think you know this, there is a very good chance of him leaving the sport at the end of this year, not on his own terms. At the end of the day, if Haas would they go for an all-new driver lineup, I think that would be a very bold move that the team perhaps yeah. needs, but not necessarily what they want, what they really want. And you know, Haas have always said, "Oh yeah, we we like loyalty." Maybe that's why they fell out with Rich Energy. I don't know, but I mean, if they're going to get rid of one driver, for me, I think they'll get rid of Grosjean. Just because Grosjean, yes. he's more... He's that loose... Ca I mean, they're both loose cannons, let's be honest. But, you know, we saw the way Grosjean drove in Silverstone defending those positions from Sainz to Ricardo. That can cause an aeroplane crash. No, Grosjean is out of his depth at the moment. I don't know what's going on. But, you know, it might sound horrible, but it feels like choosing between Grosjean and Magnussen is like choosing between two diseases. <laughs> like, Grosjean is just a slightly worse disease than Magnussen. <laughs> and, like... And it might sound harsh, right? But... That Haas team needs, they literally have the, I feel for the, where Haas is in the sort of like, you know, the context of the team and, and what they need to, to move yeah. forward. Having Grosjean and Magnussen as a driver pairing is literally probably the worst thing they can have because they're yeah. both wildly inconsistent, quite selfish. I feel both of them difficult to work together. We saw that how many times last year? And that's why, like, I think if they can get Nico Hulkenberg in the car, then having an all-new driver lineup is not necessarily such a bad thing, I think.
because at least Hulkenberg, I think, has the general experience yeah. of, and he's been around the block. I mean, he's been literally name a Formula One team he hasn't driven for in the midfield. <laughs> so he, he, I think, could, he knows his way around the car quite well. So if they can get him in, and then maybe a nice little junior, um, Schwarzman or Eilert, looking like at this stage, I mm. think that would be really positive for Haas. Yeah, I think that's a good shout. For me, I'm, I'm, I would say put out, put uh, sorry, I, Albon in that seat. No, it was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. But either why? In that seat. <laughs> what is it with you and Alex Albon? Like, just <laughs> let the man, let the man figure out his way in qualifying in Red Bull. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry, it's another tick now. We know Albon is behind Verstappen. <laughs> it's like people every every race, every race weekend, the first tweet after qualifying, gap between Albon and Verstappen for tenths. It's not like we don't know. It's beside the point. So please, well, just <laughs> oh. leave Alex alone. <laughs> I had to set you off. I'm sorry. I had to set you off. <laughs> what I was <laughs> um, what I was what I was gonna say there, what I was meant what I meant to say, what I really meant to say was I said put I lot in that seat and you know what, to be fair that's a good point having I lot and Hulkerberg makes sense you know get rid of both house drivers you've still got an experienced hand in there yeah. someone that's good with dealing yeah great little lineup I think and I lot is quick like I feel and correct me if I'm wrong but I think I lot's strength lies in like he's quite you know, one laps one lap pace he's yeah. a quick driver maybe slightly less consistent but then you have Nico Hulkenberg that's more consistent than trying to think of a good metaphor here but i'm coming up blank <laughs> what's consistent more consistent than the gap between albon and verstappen there you go we've gone full circle okay there we go <laughs> i yeah i i i agree and to be fair it could be a good someone to, it'd be a nice driver for i lot to learn from as well for for a year or two and it works for hulk as well he gets back onto the f1 grid and you know that's that's going to do wonders if he wants to tr continue to move further up further up the field and in, in recent in later years even but yeah, we'll end things off there then. Tears, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, guys, I hope you did enjoy the episode as well. Let me know down in the comments below what you think uh, of Kevin Magnussen. Do you think his career is over or could he live to fight another day in that Haas F1 team or another team on the grid? Let me know down your, your thoughts and theories down in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe to Tears and check out his podcast. All links to that will be down in the description below. But that's all from me. Uh, Tears, you got any other lasting comments you want to make? I mean, all I'm saying is biggest plot twist of 2021, Magnuson to Mercedes and Hamilton doesn't sign. <laughs> Imagine it. Imagine it. We've seen, we've seen crazier things. We've seen Rich Energy make it to Formula One. So, hey, <laughs> but brilliant. Yeah, guys, thank you so much for, for, for blah, I can't speak at the end of this video. That's good. Thank you so much for watching the video, guys. If you did enjoy, make sure you leave a like, comment, and of course, subscribe. And I will catch you all in the next one. Bye.